Welcome to Reader Syndicate 3.0, the next evolution of the look into counterculture that is canon. My name is Matthew, owner of Riot Seeds, and this started as a one-man mission for strain history and breeding science. Over time, it's evolved into something bigger, better, and more of a team effort. We will be joined by members of the Can Illuminati and other friends throughout the seasons to hear their takes on grow techniques, breeding science, strain history, and more. Our mission is to combat the narrative that corporate cannabis and seed posers are obfuscating for their own financial benefit. Welcome to the underground. We are the Syndicate. Welcome to Breeder Syndicate. I'm Matthew here with my co-host Thousandful, who's been absent for a few episodes while he takes care of stuff. Thousand, where have you been? What's been going on? Yo, yeah. Hi, everyone. It's nice to be back. It's been a while. Um, I, just, I don't know. It's not been that long, but it feels really long in it does in the long. context of our show. Just because, yeah, because <laughs> we're weekly. If you're gone for like a few weeks, people are like, oh my god, he's been gone for months. Yeah, is he gone um, now? But I think it's been maybe a month. Maybe it's been a month. Yeah. Um, but yeah, life was just getting pretty crazy. I have kind of two pretty major projects outside of, you know, outside of cannabis that um, were just, yeah, totally consuming me. One Most is, people one don't know you're of... a leading actor um, behind the scenes. That's, <laughs> That's why you don't right. Face. I was on a huge feature. Uh, <laughs> soap project. opera. Yeah. Yeah, Swedish soap opera. <laughs> <laughs> I can see it now. Um, but thankfully, one of those projects is like winding up. Um, so, you know, I could just feel like the mental space kind of coming back. But yeah, for a few weeks, I just couldn't even think about anything. So definitely appreciate, um, you know, Matt taking over for a bit. I, I saw that Dan obviously came on for a stream as well, which is awesome. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. How was that show? Do you remember that? That was was that yeah. that was I think that was not ago? last week's but the week yeah before. two weeks ago yeah yeah from when we we're recording this currently it was two weeks ago yeah no it was great anytime Dan comes on it's always really easy he's a yeah. quick thinker and he's witty so it's just very easy to fire back and forth you know he is quick he is yeah. quick um, I think I got to see a bit of it and um, his kids really funny as well like I like it the kind of like the random insights into dan's like home home life <laughs> yeah i know that's great yeah the um, chaos of home life yeah and i think otherwise what was the other thing i wanted to mention oh yeah i did have another within within my growing i did have kind of a big fail um i was meant i was wanting to do a little pollen chuck and yeah, tell not, us about you know, it. Just for yeah, yeah, just just for my own personal project, not not a commercial thing at all. It was a blind, yeah. it's going to be a blind selection, everything. But um, as Matt knows, I wanted to do a blueberry in cross, um, and an appy cross. Well, yeah, yeah. blueberry in cross and appy, um, and I just I think partly because life was so crazy already. Then I was struggling just to like. There were multiple points at which I think I fucked up. So as Matt knows, I had some germination difficulties with the blueberry in cross, totally my fault. I, I think I just like didn't really think about the fact that they were like, you know, obviously it's quite an inbred line. And so I didn't really take the care that, you know, that should have warranted. Um, yeah, I bust so... balls about germinations and how it should be done. I just had another message. Uh, with something similar where, you know, I like I always say, wait until you get your first set of tree leaves, like barely starting before you take them out of the sterile environment before you put them in a medium. Like to me, that's super important because they can get water through the top as opposed to just trying to get all through the taproot when bacteria yeah. is invading the taproot and stuff. And someone just had like six seeds, like all start and stop. And, you know, I mean, like it, it's just a, a common thing to hear. I think it's one of those things where if you are just used to growing uh, really new, you know, relatively hybrid stock, then yeah. it's easy to become complacent because you're like, oh, well, it's worked for me like uh, just about every time. I'll just keep doing it the same way, even though I kind of knew, of course, especially because I'm on the show with you. Yeah. That like my approach, which was, you know, just like uh, soak and then sow. Yeah. Um, is obviously not the most, uh, how do I put it? If you're playing a probability game, that's not what you would do. 
Um, yeah, exactly. If you're trying to maximize your like success, that's not the approach. This is just like the most convenient approach for a lot of Especially people. Especially as it relates right? to money too, like people buying seeds. You know, they're they're yes. it can be quite expensive. So like when you lose one out of a population of ten, that's a tenth of the money you've invested gone now. And then two and then yeah. three in it, you know. Yeah, yeah. So it was my first big lesson, I think, for that. And um, it was kind of fun still at the same time. Like it's not it wasn't all just bad. Like I remember messaging you about it. And then even getting to try, I, I think there was one that were like it was quite strange. It like pop it like had it had cotties, but like its tap wasn't developing. And that was quite interesting to look at yeah. um for a while. Um and I guess I just like, you know, learned about different things. I talked to Dan about it. He was like, Oh yeah, you could try like I think both of you were like, Yeah, you could try some rooting hormone on the little yeah. root to see if it does anything. And yeah. So I learned I learned quite a bit and it was it was definitely like an interesting like you were so hard through. on yourself, bro. You were so hard on yourself. Was, Dude, I hate it, man. Like part I, of it. I I know it's a part of it, but like, yeah, I don't like failing like that. Uh, yeah, no, I, I I understand. Like I, I don't like failing at all. And I do it quite often. I think it was also just that added context of the like I should have known a bit better than that as well. I think that hurt <laughs> more than just the failure. It was like, a, yeah. I, yeah, I, I think I we had know. just done the germination episode <laughs> right before that too. That was the best part. Yeah. 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 So that was stage one failure. And and in the end, I still got like, I got one special girl out of that. So I was yeah. at least like thinking, okay, I, I salvaged it just. I have something. Something. Um, but that wasn't the end of my fuck ups. Um <laughs> I, so I had like five or six appies up uh, in addition to the BB in cross. Yeah. And then what happened was that I found a few males, what I thought were males. I had one that was like definitely a male. And then I was like, oh, I've got this other one that I think is a male. And it seems to like, you know, again, quite fairly arbitrary selection during veg. I was like, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, it seems to smell better. It seems to be like it has nice branching structure. I'll just go for this one. And I threw the rest away. And of course... <laughs> Of course, when it flowered, it was not at all a male. It was oh, not a male. no. So, oh, no. so I had no backups either, right? So another yeah, yeah. huge lesson, like, uh, don't just assume that your, you know, your, your pre-flower identification is always right. Like, at yeah. least keep a backup. Yeah. Because at that point, I remember looking in, looking in the growth space and being like, oh, my fucking God. Like, this whole project is <laughs> fucked now because of me. <laughs> Yeah, like um, prejudging, like by branching and stuff, can be real tricky, especially with some lines that stretch real heavy. They can look real male, yeah. And, and yeah, uh, it's not a no. I mean, I was looking at the pre flowers, obviously as well. It was just, I thought I was, I was kind of like judging across the different males that I had, I guess, or something. Yeah, I, yeah. Basically, in my mind, I had like three males, and I was trying to yeah. make a call, but they were obviously not all male. Yeah, um, so. <laughs> Yeah, uh, you know, obviously, many obvious lessons there. Like, yeah. it would have taken more time to have committed to one, could have kept backups of the others. Like, but with small space, it's hard to do. So I yeah. Also yeah, yeah, that. yeah. Yeah, I think definitely the context, being quite stressed about it as well, I was kind of like hurrying to make a call yeah. so that I could free up space and free up my own time. Exactly. And being like, okay, cool, I can get rid of all these plants now, great. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you know, overall still really funny. And like, of course, I still get to grow a bunch of great plants, still get to, you know, flower out the appies, get to flower out the BVIX. Um, and the BVIX I've kept as well. I've got cuttings, so we'll get to go oh. again. Um, oh. And uh, I didn't keep the appies, unfortunately, but I'm going to be, I'm running already, vegging the uh, good old Mountain Dew, which is. Yeah, you should have plenty uh, of stock over there now, huh? Okay, yeah, yeah. Thanks room. to. Thanks to Matt and High and Lonesome, I uh, oh, blew no. up my mailbox. Got, yeah, got got plenty. Don't did think did I get the Blue IX in there for that round or not? Were they made yet? Not this round. Not this round. Yeah, I need to get. That's you okay though. Point. Like, I got plenty about the blue stuff that I want to look through, like the blue resin. That's you know, right. Blue sour, the 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 blue bubba stuff as well. You, know, you gave yeah. me a couple of different versions of that. So. There's some really nice berries coming out of the blue bubbas, both of them, the pea berry and the blubber kush um yeah 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 it's a great selection that may be my next stuff. that might be what i do next yeah, yeah. um but yeah uh, otherwise this current or this upcoming um chuck is hopefully going to be that bb in cross girl and 
uh, an EB app email, and that will be fun. Are you sure you don't want to just jump into reversals before you even do that? Oh man, no! <laughs> I, I'm like a little more. No, 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 no! I don't want to add <laughs> any more on com- <laughs> any more complexity <laughs> to this. I just want to make some seeds. Um, and just like, yeah, like I said to you, I think privately, like, just really want to see what the process is actually like and go through yeah. it. Um, and yeah, I think it's just one of those things I think we, that you naturally want to learn as a grower after a while, right? Like it just yeah. makes sense. Yeah. Right, I mean, seeds. there's nothing more, um, I don't know, satisfying to me than like having fully formed seeds and buds as you pull them out, looking at the maturity, seeing they're all mature. And yeah, I, I love that whole part of it, watching new birth happen. It, it's weird. It's weird how maternal instincts kick in when it comes to seed breeding over time. So even especially on your first time too, though, like that's, yeah, it's, yeah, it's, 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 it's a good feeling. Yeah. And I mean, maybe this kind of ties into what we'll talk about a bit later on, kind of reflecting on some of these uh, conversations that you and I have had with the, especially the older forum guys. Like, sure. I think one thing it reminds me of, you know, when I hear them talk is it's nice to remember that kind of feeling, that magical feeling when you first started, yeah. um, when you're new and, and how amazing it all was. And it's not that like we lose that completely, but it's easy to like forget maybe. Sure. Yeah. And I think, you know, obviously pushing yourself to do new, new things is one way to kind of um, get that feeling back. Like, you know, for me, like trying to make seeds is, is, is going to be, somewhat equivalent to me growing my first plants it's a new completely new experience cannabis burnout's a real thing like especially over you know decades time it can be very very serious and you can get burned out pretty hard so it is always good to keep it changing and keep it yeah. you know experiencing new things in it yeah definitely definitely i mean i won't you know i won't name names but you know the I, I like there's a there's a there's a friend mutual friend that we have who like yeah just just had a hard time and it's like you can see like how much work it is obviously obviously yeah. like to maintain you know that many mothers or you know to try and do all these different projects and yeah yeah so hats off really to all funny. of you who've been doing this for you know you said decades that's not me yeah. obviously some of you have <laughs> yeah. and that yeah. is that is next level to me yeah um, it's hard especially keeping moms and shit too. Once you get into that, it's like now you're in it for the long haul, you know? Yeah. 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 No, no vacations, seeing, no breaks. That was the other thing I was going to mention. There was a couple of months ago, like it was actually possible that we were thinking of doing a small overseas trip this year. Yeah. Um, for unrelated reasons, that's not happening, but like even trying to think in my mind, like how to prepare for that, um, you know, like if I, you know, what I would try to save and how I would try to save it, like would I have to pass them to someone else to take care of? Would someone have to come to the house? And, you know, yeah. I, I obviously these are known problems that yeah. we all have. I remember one um, time I tried to do it using something called blue mats. Um, yeah, but, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah that's, so for people that don't know, they're little ceramic like things that have a hole on top with the plug connected to a, uh, a piece of, I don't know, tubing. And you you set it in the of like a bucket of nutrient solution. You set the the dripper end into the plant, and over time it's supposed to wick it up in there. But the problem is like unless they're weighted heavily, they'll just sit at the top and barely get any water into it. And I found that out the hard way one time. You know, like it's it's so complex. I was like, oh yeah, I'll just run blue mats. No big deal. I've seen other people do that shit. So, but yeah, no, it's it can be hard yeah. and complex. I've looked at that too, obviously, uh, as yeah. many of us have. And I think the, the thing that freaks me out is how long it would take, kind of what you were saying, really, just yeah. how long it would take to test and calibrate. Um, you need weights know, on them. Yeah, and, uh, you need to actually, like, figure it out over quite a long period of time and then and then know that it will work. Yeah, don't rush like, into it last second and just wing it and hope. <laughs> I'm telling you, yeah, that sucks. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. You can't even looking at it next week. I don't know why they're not like sold weighted because they just bob on top and barely get any water in it, but you need it like almost completely immersed to get water in it. So if it's not weighted heavily enough, then it won't go into the water. It, it just doesn't make any, their design doesn't make any sense to me. So you mean this is the like reservoir side? Is that right? Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't I, make any sense to me at all. How, I'm how sure they, some experienced blue mat people can can comment. Yeah, chime in. Uh, leave leave a comment below and tell me how I screwed up. Yeah, yeah. Tell tell those of us who are like maybe vaguely interested as a contingency, if we, you know, how how you would approach using something yeah. like that. Um, yeah. Um, anything else? Well, you know, speaking of burnout, it was good. You know, part of the break was actually being able to get out of the city just for a few days. So I left yeah. the plants here and they were fine for a few days. Um, thank God for Pete for me. <laughs> just yeah. that's why I don't yeah. do cocoa. Yeah. Um, and it was nice just to be away for a few days and just like have a change of scenery. Um, I think, in fact, when when you and Dan were doing the live, I was on the road and Dan was messaging me being like, where's Matt? He's late. Like, should I cancel Oh, yeah, it? that's right. That's right. I think I woke up like <laughs> last minute or something. Yeah. <laughs> then you guys started. No, it wasn't too bad. I think you guys started maybe like 10 or 15 minutes off the mark, but it was fine. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's funny yeah. as well. Yeah. But yeah, nice to be on the road. <laughs> When was the last time you were on the road, Matt? Uh, last time I was on the road was just for that last trip where I was all sick. Oh, from the last out. party. Yeah. Oh, I, I mean, technically, the like a few weeks ago when I went out and DJ and uh, out in the mountains. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Got it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I was so fucking hungover. I was wild. <laughs> I don't drink anymore ever, like ever. Not a beer here, or there. So, yeah, yeah. Someone busted out peanut butter whiskey though, and. That ended me. That ended me. There's like pictures out there that of me sounds, like snoring in my car. Like Ugh. that sounds like it would be nice for like a couple of shots. Or wouldn't you get kind of sick of that? Or does it like is it okay to keep drinking? I mean, it was delicious. <laughs> to me, it was, it was sweet and delicious. I never had it before. This dude, uh, Steve, he had like a a parka, and like because it was a scooter rally out in the mountains for like Vespas and Lambrettas and old mod culture. And um, so he's wearing his parka and he opened it up and he had like all these little like airport whiskey bottles of all these different types. He's like, bah. So he's like, here, try this peanut butter whiskey. I took a sip. And I was like, hmm, that's delicious. Clunk, 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 clunk. And I had already drank some beer earlier. So that was just and the end of me pretty much. But I was the last one standing trying to get everyone to still drink with me. <laughs> yeah, there's no way I could like, I, I, I haven't. I haven't really had a drink in a long time. And I think if I were to have like a night, I would be fucked for ages. Like, yeah, it, it took me, I think I slept for like two days after that. I was just so hungover, <laughs> so hungover. Yeah, I'm not a fan. Hey, at least it was a change of scenery, I guess. And I'm yeah. sure it was nice to see those people as well for you. Yeah. And I had a DJ gig the next week. Um, Going Underground Records here opened up their new location. And one of my best friends that I used to be in a band with owns it. So we did a DJ gig there the next the following week. <clears throat> but that was in town. It was fun, though. It was nice seeing everybody, like all the old homies show up while we're just playing music. Yeah, that sounds nice. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't really like DJing too much, um, especially don't like being called the DJ because it has all that connotation with it. I just like playing music, forcing people to listen to the music that I like is, is my pleasure, you know? Yeah, yeah, and it's a great service for those people. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I bet, yeah. Or some punk rock down the throat. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think for me that was, I think that that that's like the summary of my time away, ultimately, and... Um, I think I think today's episode will be a bit more of a rambly one. We, we're going to take it easy. We're, we've got a few different like mini topics to to discuss. Yeah. Um, and so I think yeah, we're going to talk about uh, well, Matt mostly is going to talk about the the uh, upcoming rescheduling of cannabis, sure. uh, and then we'll maybe reflect a bit on like the forum episodes, the, some of the releases, uh, whether you know Matt and I have, have are excited about any any shows coming up. Um, and then we also have a bit of a like community question that we can yeah. dig into for, to, to kind of wrap it up. Um, but yeah, just a chill one today. Um, All right. Yeah, Matt, do you want to tell us about the whole rescheduling <laughs> thing? Yeah. I mean, like, first off, it, it took me a while to look into because my immediate reaction when I hear about a law being passed that isn't voted on, I'm like, okay, who lobbied for it? Skeptical? What, what money went into it? And if we're not voting on it, they don't do anything to give us more like rights on their own just for the good of their 
just out of the goodness of their heart. That doesn't happen with our government or, or in politics ever. Like, I know you didn't vote on it, <laughs> you know, but let's uh, let's uh, let's deschedule this. You know, like there's always a reason behind it. They always have agendas. It's politics. It's how it works for me. So I didn't really look into it much, um, but I did. You know, enough people were asking about it. I was like, well, I guess I should kind of look into this, you know, instead of just being skeptical. Um, so it looks like it's going to pass. I don't remember how long it's going to take to pass, but it's not necessarily passed yet. Um, there, There's like a 30 to 60 day window for people to like write in and like the DEA to comment on it and all kinds of other weird shit that goes on. Um, let's see. You know, you have different Republican senators chiming in on it democrats yeah. and the one thing i i saw about an hour ago they they uh tweeted out that the dea didn't sign off on it which was interesting and they don't know quite the implications of the dea not signing off on it so that's kind of an unknown right now was there something about the director not actually being there or something i saw a headline maybe yeah it, i don't it, in the thing it said it, they they don't know if it was like a stance of them not showing up to not sign off on it as like a fuck you um or if it was just like a matter of someone not being there but it wasn't signed off on by the dea which leaves room for a lot of pushback from the dea if they want to and they can always be an issue always as they've always been because that's what keeps them alive is drug <laughs> drug war money you know um, yeah, I mean, see. okay. If it were to, if it were to go through, um, so assuming it does go through, like, what do you see its impact being? Maybe say for like, maybe we start with like um, people like you, man. Like, how yeah. how might it impact someone like you who's like, you know, it wouldn't selling seeds and stuff. It wouldn't like from my level of seed sales, it wouldn't affect me at all. Like, it's not changing plant counts. It's not changing. Um, uh, the ability to accept credit cards. It's not changing anything like that. Um, there is some kind of banking bill that's slightly altered by it. But like this all goes back to licenses, licensing. Uh, yeah, the banking thing, yeah. Yeah, the, the banking thing is a huge part of why the cannabis industry is having issues. Um, there, there is some IRS statute. It changes a little bit, and I think it only changes it to the point of where you can like report like lights as taxable stuff. You know, like if you buy lights, you can report that as a write-off. Um, and I guess that wasn't a thing before. I didn't know that. But, I mean, I don't ever, you know, write weed stuff off because it just seems like playing with fire. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, but it's been interesting to hear, like, the different political avenues since, you know, we're a, a, a Democrat and Republican-only country. Um, there, there was a quote from a Republican senator here that said, uh, marijuana is a gateway drug, and Democrats' move to legalize reflects pro-criminal, anti-American policies that will stimulate more crime on American streets. He also argued that cannabis banking legislation facilitates an entire infrastructure and an ecosystem for more drug usage in America, which um, very, very 1970s, 1960s type rhetoric, mm -hmm. I'd say. Yeah, uh, but that's to be expected. I, I don't. I don't quite understand yeah. um, the Republican Democrat divide on this because they're both so money hungry for taxes. Whether even though Republicans say they're not, like mm -hmm. they're as money hungry as the Democratic side is for taxes. They're it could be an optics thing this. for their voter base. I, you know, I'm sure just it is. To, like play to what they perceive their voting base, you know, their values to be, and like I don't know, trying to make a bit more of a show of it. But ultimately, yeah. maybe still being like, nah, it's going to be great for for the taxes or like our, I don't know, yeah. And the one thing I also read was that they wouldn't be able to, it would take like light speed, unprecedented um, quickness for them to pass this before the next presidential election, which depending on who's president next, if it's completely different administration, that could come backfire and refold everything and make this a totally non-issue. You know what I mean? Um, but at the same time, like, I don't want to sound like I'm saying, you know, Democrats are doing something progressive for the cannabis industry. I don't believe that for one second. Like, I think that <laughs> they're doing it for themselves, like for their own investments, for their, you know, their sons and daughters who have these cannabis companies that they're investing in. Like, that's what I think this is all about. Big money that's investing. It's not to benefit um, 
any small time grower. It's not to benefit the people who have been pushing for decriminalization, or rescheduling all these years. There's nothing that's going to benefit us like that. That's not how this works. Um, maybe asking an obvious question, but would it benefit like big industry players? Yes. Yeah, I think so in the end, but they, it, would, it wouldn't be like um, like a collective owner. It wouldn't benefit someone like that. It would be big industry, like yeah. uh, mm -hmm. like the, one of the top six marijuana companies on earth, you know, something like that. They control a large share of the the money coming in. Um, it, I'm sure a good... those companies. I'm sure their stock prices have just skyrocketed since uh, those announcements. Very, very possible. Very possible. Um, here's a good quote too. Um, let me see. I'm trying to see who it's by. Uh, Sander Zag Zagzebski, co-chair of Clark Hills Cannabis Practice, whatever that is. Schedule three doesn't legalize weed. In fact, it just means it has a medical benefit, and you can buy it with a prescription. Uh, said whoever, uh, Sanders of, 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 Cherry Hill, of Clark Hills Cannabis Practice. But none of the providers of cannabis are licensed pharmaceutical companies. They're not FDA regulated. And of course, none of the recreational folks are getting a prescription of any type. So cannabis is not going to be complying with that regime. Um, yeah, the immediate impact of uh, rescheduling will be that the IRS code section 280E will no longer apply to plant touching state legal cannabis companies and they will be able to take normal business tax deductions afforded to other industries. So that's like the main thing is that it's write-offs, tax write-offs. And that's what tells me it only affects like the major corporations that are interested in that. And that's probably who lobbied for this. What about like uh, individual consumers in terms of like, uh, I don't know, criminality and, and what people could be charged with? How does that so, so far, they're not even like looking into, as far as I'm aware, like I was researching this, like making it reverse charges of people already in jail. Like yeah. It's not really yeah, that touching was or affecting yeah. that. And that's disgusting yeah. to me. Um, mm -hmm. It's, it, and again, someone, this is another quote this is simply ending the federal prohibition on cannabis for all purposes. It will still be up to states to decide what legal, what's legal within their boundaries. So it's still up to states to decide. And if your state's like a, mm -hmm. a more anti-cannabis state it's not really gonna like mess with that change at all. that yeah okay wait so can you come back to the banking thing can you tell me a bit yeah. more about the banking thing because that's like a separate but related that's like its own act right that, yes um, banking act and so how does it how would it be affected by this rescheduling or how, how are it, they like it's not re it's not it's supposed to be like optics and say like oh this is a good look for future like that, that they might oh, change that okay. in the future. You know what I mean? Okay. But um, Because of this, it yeah. might lead them to change that. Okay. But even with that, like you have to have the correct licenses and everything to even have that apply to you. Like, you know, you have to be one of the bigger companies that pays these big, big bucks mm -hmm. to be able to play with banking systems when this does happen in the future. Um, yeah. It just sounds like a bunch yeah. of Chad okay. and Brad so, shit. From what I'm from what I'm hearing from you, it seems like for most of us and most of the people who watch this show, it's probably not going to change our lives. Or you know, no. sorry, you the the Americans who watch the show, it's not going to change their lives too much. No, and to me, it does similar stuff to like Prop sixty four was telling everyone that it made cannabis legal in California, and people just like, oh, cannabis is legal in California. Look at the U.S. It's so advanced with its marijuana laws, and we're like, while well, everybody else is like going out of business because we can't compete with big corporate cannabis. Like it seems to me to be one of those things where it's like, they can go, <laughs> we rescheduled, you know, we're so progressive, yeah. blah, blah, blah. And it's just nothing. Yeah. It means nothing. Um, yeah. It's cynical. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I'm always like very, very biased on those takes, but just even looking at what like non-biased takes are on it, they all are saying the same thing I'm getting from it, you know, like, not going to change anything um, unless you're a major player and and it's not even going to necessarily go in before the next presidential election which could mean that it's a non it might be a non-issue that it'll get flipped off the second you know another administration goes in if they do which i don't even know what to say about any of that but yeah i think it was interesting to me because it um the announcements came around the same time that uh germany legalized yes um and obviously that they're not the same at all or like you know there's a huge contrast between yeah. the two i think germany's one is like yeah it's not full decriminalization either it's like yeah. legalization in the sense that like uh you know as an adult you can 
carry up to X amount, right? Something and like have that. X uh, amount of plants, like two or three or yeah. something weird. Yeah. 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 And it's, it's wild yeah. to see people's reactions to stuff like that in Europe. Like, um, you know, like I, I mess around in the UFO world a little bit. So I was, I was in a chat room over there uh, for a YouTube show. And uh, just a random guy in there was saying, yeah, congratulations to us. You know, cannabis just legalized in Germany. We can grow one plant or whatever it was. And I was just like, oh, man, you don't even realize, though, like, you don't even know how bad this is. You're, you're it's just it's I don't know. It's such a negative take on all of it. But it's just, I just see the fallout 10 years from now that they're going to be like actual cannabis producers, not just consumers, because consumers don't seem to ever recognize the part that like how it affects the growers and will affect what they get to smoke on the back end of it. No. Well, I, to be fair to most consumers, it's just like a black box, right? They don't really know yeah. much about what's actually As long as they on. can go buy and smoke, they're happy. That, yeah. Like I said, yeah, yeah. They, the, the producer aspect of it, they don't get, they're going to end up with Walmart weed. So <laughs> I try and explain that. It's like just... Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm looking at the I'm looking at the law. It's if I'm not mistaken, and someone obviously feel free to correct me, anyone in the comments, but uh for an adult, they can carry up to 25 grams, which is about an ounce. Um, and you can grow up to three plants. Three, yeah, that's what it was. Yeah. Yeah. So think about how much great breeding you can get done with three plants. It's very hard. Yeah. Very hard. Yeah. So how how are these like all the best breeding that's been done in our in the cannabis scene in America has been done clandestine. It's not been done by these big industry people selecting out of a thousand something plants. It's been home growers, you know, um, but three plants makes it rough, makes it really rough to hybridize, do any of that stuff. So, oh, man, I, it, it is really complicated. And like I sometimes yeah. think if I were being really optimistic. uh you could say that superficially it's going in the right direction and hopefully eventually that will lead to something better than what we have. Um, I think but that's they rarely give back point. rights. Yeah. Like to me, it's just like they, they don't give back rights just to do it ever. It's not something. Yeah. 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 There's that happens there in American politics. And, yeah. 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 And it's, when you, that's like when, why, when I see, Oh, we're rescheduling, even though you didn't vote on it and it wasn't like, you know, a movement by the people. That's when I'm like, Hmm. Mm, who lobbied who lobbied lobby fucks i don't i'm, I'm so yeah. anti-lobbyist it's the most disgusting part of our political system well one of them other than the fact there's only two <laughs> like two <laughs> sides that can get into uh any kind of office really yeah yeah i mean this all just reminds me as well that down here you know in the uh democratic uh, nation of antarctica um, yeah we had it's similar like in terms of its classification it's a similar problem like it's i think tech, here it's called class a um mm -hmm. and it you know alongside like uh, the harder stuff um so it, you know more or less the same class what will you guys call it one to three right yeah um, let's get to one to three so you probably have a to c yeah a to c same thing we had a it was slightly different in that we actually had a national a national referendum uh a vote on whether to legalize and it wasn't yeah. i don't think there was ever the option to decriminalize i think it was only like legalization so yeah. similar to germany like you'd have limits um the vote failed on like a knife edge knife edge it was like a like maybe less than one percent yeah um that it failed so you know people voted no and it was just really infuriating because the government at the time still could have just passed it like yeah. they or they could have done something but they just you know they just kind of use that to cover their asses and they were just like yeah see it's no so yeah, we're not we tried anything. yeah yeah we tried there you go and now it seems likely that that kind of opportunity won't come up again for another like decade you know because there's nothing in it for the government <laughs> yeah but at, <laughs> at the least... same time i just think like knowing that that's a place i'd like to move because that's where opportunity is found <laughs> in the bold you know i see what you mean i see yeah. what you mean oh <sighs> Yeah, I don't know. It is complicated because at the same time, it's like I also it's hard to someone who's just a consumer and feel, them feeling safer is hard to, you know, that's kind of irreducible. That's, you know, you can't say that's a bad thing for people who are just. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> just kidding. 
just kidding people but it is it is complex for us yeah. who are like yeah on the other side of it you know yeah i just it to me it's sti- my my passion's breeding so it stifles mm-hmm. breeding it to me it totally stifles it like if it's left up to corporate ag cannabis who know really not shit about cannabis to then take the genome further that like it just completely stifles all like like i said everything all the best genetics out there have been made in black market ops um over the years and Mm -hmm. there's not been since since the legal times there hasn't been a lot of advancement in breeding in fact that's when we got the cookies era so it's just like this is what we get you know so it's to, to me it's it's proof and evidence of its stifling breeding yeah yeah it narrows things it um yeah 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 i mean because at the end you you were just subject to the forces of capitalism right which are ultimately like exploitative and um just want to exploit the you know whatever type um, of product that like seems to be the most successful and that's all you're ever going to get right like in canada what i've been talking about like my friends up there tell me is that the the people who do the buying of seeds for the government that are allowed to be sold aren't even cannabis people. So you have people choosing what genetics go forward forward that probably don't even smoke or have any interest in why these are the genetics are choosing to go forward. I don't even know how they determine that. Like if it's a crapshoot or throw a monkey throwing shit, you know, like, yeah, it, it just blows my mind how all that works. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah anything else like, on this? I'll never rely on politicians for my job or career or my passion. Like I I've tried to make this such a non-issue for how I exist Mm -hmm. and live that I could give less of a fuck what's going on in the political world. It doesn't affect me and it never will. I don't think. Pardon my French. Nah, it makes sense. I give it, I get it. It's, it's pretty, it's, it's very, um, it's very discouraging to witness. Like the, the more you learn about, um how those games work and the lobbying and everything it is extremely bleak um even for those of us who live outside of the u.s like obviously everyone we know we have to kind of like watch what's going on for sure. you guys because it it does have like consequences for the rest of us especially yeah, those of us in Western countries yeah um so i mean germany as well right so the, yeah. those two you know the u.s and germany making moves is something that we have to pay attention to um, yeah definitely but yeah yeah still still pretty disappointing yeah Yeah. um if you guys have any other opinions please weigh in in the comments it's obviously like quite a you know quite a thorny issue so uh, and i like if i'm being a little bit even more skeptical i'd wonder if they brought up the scheduling shit during this particular time in the world with the chaos going on to like be like a highlight to it's like a distraction yeah because like (laughs) People are wondering why Democrats and Republicans are aligning so hard on a specific issue together when they don't on anything. And all of a sudden it's like, okay, let's bring up a reason to fight again. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Thought. Don't think about the wars. Just, <laughs> just think of any of that. Yeah, exactly. Jeez. Uh, well, okay. Well, man, is there anything else you want to say on this? No, uh, just, just, just people do your research. Um, even though I didn't even do research much until recently for this, but um, use common sense. If they're giving you something you didn't ask for, and it's the people who take money from you in taxes, ask questions. Don't just assume it's for the benefit of the people, because it's usually not. That's my best advice. Maybe, I don't know, I feel like as, you know, citizens under such governments, you just hope that you, their interests happen to align with yours. That's that's literally that it. Works. Yeah. That's or a vote cynical it, Vote at politics locally and hope to affect stuff in your state, you know? Like, there's that old quote, all politics is local. Um, that's a real thing, you know? But even then, it's just, who wants to get involved in fucking politics anymore? Oh, God, I hate politicians. Oh man, it's a freaky looking game. From yeah. The outside. Cannabis is bad enough, bro. And political enough. I don't want to get past that. <laughs> yeah. Hey, which is worse? <laughs> I'm not sure. Ufology might be worse than all of them. <laughs> uh, okay. 
Shall we move on to yeah, just yeah. The, our like a mid-season recap? Yeah, um, let's do it. So, man, I talked a bit about this. We're not like going to get into like very, very specific uh, reflections or anything. But I kind of, I was my prompt for Matt was like, we had a bit of a theme this season, which was talking to people who were involved in the forums from quite early on. Um, whether that's the Canacabana crews, there are two of them, right? D Man's yeah. crew and then Kirby's crew, and then yeah. well, maybe not crews, like those two generations. Generation. And then yeah. we had Sub Rob on as well. And so I think I think my prompt for Matt was like, you know, do you have any like very, very broad uh like feelings or reflections after hearing some of that? Like, did it make you think about your own time in that time on the forums? Uh you know whether it's like what they were growing what the culture was like for them versus for you um you know i don't yeah. know yeah start wherever i think yeah um so like uh let's start with the canna cabana episodes um like uh d-man skiddy howie their generation was the generation before mine on the forums like before i started getting yeah. really involved so mm -hmm. it was it was things like that for me are always a treat to hear when people that came before me were integrally involved in stuff that I was involved in later and hearing like different because not everything's literal or not everything's passed down correctly. So you get to hear all these stories about how other things happened. And I don't know, like that, those are some of my favorite shows to do is interviewing the people who came before me and were just as passionate about like seeds and genetics as I am. That's mm -hmm. the kind of stuff that really, really, really interests me. Um, I think it also, when I hear them and their stories, it obviously makes me imagine what it would have been like to have been them, where it was like an absolutely new frontier of like yeah. communicating about the stuff and just like, you know, um, uncharted territory, right? Yeah. And like the idea to pass cuts around and hold them and get them out to people on forums and stuff like that wasn't being done before these guys. So, I mean, th there were small pockets like the 77 crew and stuff like that, but it, generally speaking, that generation of guys, um, it really wasn't being done like that before. So it really, really built the whole industry as it was to carry on. Um, yeah, I will say one more thing is that like, for me, like one of the feeling I did feel some jealousy, right, in the sense mm -hmm. that uh, obviously not the saying that there were no politics, but the politics back then were very different. And it, yeah. it didn't it, it definitely seemed like not every action was so weighted or so, you know, I don't know how you would put it, but um, they definitely, it felt like they were much freer to do whatever, right? Pass things yeah. around to whoever, share, um, hold it on seems to stuff. Like, yeah. and people weren't as precious as they are or might be yeah. now. Um, so yeah, in, into the Kirby episodes, um, those those were my era. Like I was active during that time. And, and this goes on to the sub Rob era. He was a little bit before me, but then our times kind of coincided even down to me being in the San Diego's finest, you know, threads with him. Um, the, the one thing I noticed the most probably in the, in the, my generation episodes, my, my experience from other people's experiences in the forum is always so vastly different. Like I came in trying to be the figurative pipe bomb for the industry in my mind like seeing everything i don't like and seeing all the corruption and just wanting to like cause chaos and, and start it over you know like this needs to be broken and rebuilt there's so much revolution. corruption just inherently in here some, like a, a revolution of sorts like i'm an idiot so like i really thought i could do this shit, you know um in doing that i was banned from every forum that existed at some point other than my own you know like maybe yeah, I don't think there was any that I didn't have some sort of temporary ban from. So well, while well, these guys were, you know, like had a lot of camaraderie and stuff on the forums, I had some of that, but not a ton, like not a ton. I was very much a rogue element. Um, yeah. So, yeah, it's it's interesting to hear other people that have had those experiences. And like I had friends that were like really well liked on the forums and stuff, but it was always a joke because I was the most hated guy. So like trying to... um associate with that was always really hard you know there was of course there's gonna be some jealousy there like i would have liked to have had that camaraderie i just didn't necessarily feel that with everyone and if you and at that time if you spoke up against anyone that was a big name and, and even asked hard questions uh even respectfully hard questions 
you were just met with derision. And once you're banned from a place, everybody's like, hmm, why do you get banned? Must be a piece of shit. Hmm. And that just carries on. Each time you get banned more and more, well, if everybody's banned, yeah, this guy yeah. just real bad. You know what I mean? So, yeah. I guess that's one downside of that time, which is that people were very, like, it was a lot more, for lack of a better term, like feudal, like hierarchical. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. You know, there were these little, like, on not enclaves, but little, like, tribes. And, um, if you were out, you were out, right? Of those. Yeah. And I've talked about it before on the forums during yeah. my era that like, okay, versus uh, like the D-Man era, there was one main heaven stairway seed bank where you got to go do this stuff. And, you know, Overgrow was attached to that, that forum. But during my era, every single forum had a seed bank attached to it. And in, in doing that, if you spoke up against any of those breeders on there, you're Ixnade and blacklisted from that forum. And all, the, you know, like all the dick writers that go along with that on each level. So, yeah, it's uh, that that is a main difference, I think, between those two eras, how hard it would be to assimilate. It would have been much easier to assimilate during um, the man's era, say, versus um, mm -hmm. what Kirby was talking about, for sure, or, or some yeah. of even. OK, well, I mean, on that note, like, did you have any thoughts about maybe more on the side of like genetics, provenance? Like, were there did you have thoughts on like, you know, how, how different was, you know, the stuff that each of these groups were growing um, to what you were maybe or even just uh, between themselves? Um, did, were there any like new was there any new information that came to light in any of those conversations? I'm sure there was new information. Um, I'd have to go back and re-listen. Yeah, but yeah, like the cool. like D Man's crew era, um, lots of Brothers Grimm. We, we hear that nonstop from that era. Um, the Dutch flowers. We talked about Dutch flowers. That's some new info that I that I could put out there. Um, mm -hmm. Dutch flowers. They weren't a Dutch they weren't a Dutch seed company, but they were called Dutch flowers, and they were ran. They were sold on Heaven Stairway, and they were making like you know like they put them on auction on Sea Bay for like Sea Bay for like you know a thousand a pack which was ridiculous for back then like ridiculous but it would be you know bit up bit up bit up and um i've always had this theory that and and it was i think it started through reefer man which is like the worst source on earth for information but when i first spoke to him i asked him who ran dutch flowers because that's always fascinated me this this company that had like the first hype seeds and um he's like oh yeah that was calrissian i was like are you sure he's like yeah well you know i worked with them a lot you know like i I knew what he was doing. And then my old buddy Jojo would make seeds and send them into Heaven Stairway. And looking back, I would see that they would come out and be released under Dutch flowers. So that was also kind of interesting, but I didn't know if That's like he was just sending in reproductions for free at that time or how it was working. Um, but when I was talking to D-Man, he came to the same conclusion separately on his own about Calrissian. And that's not his real last name, by the way. So, so you guys know. Um, I'm not doxing him. Um, it's or RC Richard Calrissian. Um, it it always seemed to be like really really nice, um, copywriting like the best for its time. Like this strain will be blah blah blah. It came got its name because of blah blah blah. It was always really well spelled out. Always sounded really good. Like the metal haze because we grew with uh or it had this metallic taste. You know like. All these different facets, chocolate trips, so chocolatey with the chocolate tie and uh, <laughs> indigo diamond. And, you know, um, yeah, it was always so appealing. Even even during my era, go, going back and reading that, they always had the best copywriting. And that's kind of what Calrissian was known for. Um, that's right. I remember you mentioning specifically yeah. how good the marketing, the writing was, right? It is phenomenal, like legendary. Um, I mean, I probably use Asp try to incorporate aspects of that in my own just like in in trying to describe as best i can when i'm selling something my experience with it based on reading those and being like oh because they're saying this this and this i feel like i can get this this and this from it and that appeals to me but like i've tried to be more accurate about it because their shit was not accurate at all like going looking back after being able to grow a bunch of dutch flower stuff like chocolate trip wasn't chocolatey it was more like c99 you know like <laughs> shit like that like yeah, I don't know. Uh, it, that's mm -hmm. that's one of those parts of um, history I'd like to really, really pull the thread on is RC and his his business because Heaven Stairway was so legendary and 
um, he's still out there, you know, like the guy's still out there. I, and I know where he works and it would be nice to interview him, but like, because he went through so such a big process with the courts and shit, I don't know if that dude has PTSD from it all, or if he even wants to speak on anything, it would be great if he did. Um, if anybody knows him, you know, you can always show him the show and tell him to reach out. Um, yeah, that's one of those white whales, like figuring out the RC story versus Dutch flowers mm -hmm. and overall the heaven stairway story. I actually remember you talking about RC like quite a long time ago on this show before I started and stuff. Yeah. Potentially. Like he's someone or maybe that was R. Oh, uh, he's the other yeah. good, really good writer. Yeah, yeah he's the about. other amazing, amazing writer. Yeah, from high times back in the day. And again, that dude so far is still alive. He's really old, but like I would kill to interview him and have gotten no response, no interest, no nothing. Like I've I've written him letters, uh, emails. I've tweeted at him. I see him respond to other people. So he's looking at his tweet, his Twitter, but like, yeah, I can't get anything uh, like that. Those two are. Some of the bigger white whales, and of course the other R, uh, the other RC, Rob Clark. Uh, the other RC, yes, yeah. yes. We, um, yeah, we, we will say say less about that for now, but yeah, yeah. for sure. Um, Those are the three white whales, though. You know, sorry, this is a tan complete tangent. I think we'll come back to the forum stuff, um, but just thinking about copyright, um, mm -hmm. are we fucked now with Chat GPT? Like. I, I, like all the white label companies is going to start using AI to write all their like, you know, really generic descriptions of stuff. I also think like pictures for plants are soon to be fucked. Like you can just have a, a, a picture you can't back research and see that someone stole this picture from someone and you can have it completely made up by AI. And now you have this new strain, even though the, the, the seeds may not look like that at all when you grow them out, but like as a presentation to put a picture up there, like, yeah, I think that's going to, we're fucked with that too. Like, it's going to be hard to tell who's lying, who's not, unless you're a good grower, grow them out, yeah. can, you know, have, have data points to show, oh, this isn't even like that. That guy's a fucking dummy, you know? It's going to be a lot of that coming up. Oof, okay. That, that, this might be like an, a topic for another episode. Sure, yeah. <laughs> what AI means for marketing and cannabis. You know, like, I'd rather not have a picture than use a fake picture like that like that's just promises oh, yeah. promises yeah um yeah I don't that's know. actually misleading as opposed to like i don't know yeah you know, exactly I... mm. okay okay anyway sorry back to back to the forum stuff for a bit um what about when what about talking to sub rob because obviously that one you know that's san diego that's local yeah. to you um so how did you feel about those those talks I like sub Rob and me have been friends for a long time. I love that dude. Like me and him have talks about life and just everything in general. We get along so well on every level, politically, everything. Like we just see the world in very similar ways. Um, during the San Diego's finest era, he was the only person that was nice to me in that fucking thing. Um, like no one liked me there. Not one. Like they just did not like me. And I, you know, I'm kind of grading, so I get that. But, um, yeah, uh, so I, I would have liked to have been more involved in that. And I remember at the time feeling like like I should have been more involved in it, but I felt like I wasn't allowed to be more involved in it, if that makes sense. One thing I did learn that I wasn't aware, like because I was kind of friends with Ape like during those years, uh, G, as we referred to him, Ape, and um, buying tons of clones off him. A lot of the clones, me and Rob were running it during those years were the same exact clones, and I didn't know that. And I didn't know uh, that that he was a major influence, like one of the main influences on San Diego's finest popping up to showcase the clones. So that was fascinating. Shout out Ape again. Like he, he's the guy who who made sure I had cookies really early on and uh, cherry pie and stuff. Um, always been super super good to me. Uh, like yeah, I mean lot. even in my like brief forays through that through those threads, like you could tell he was like a hub, right? Like yeah, write that down by the way. Hit up Ape. <laughs> we must well oh, have yeah, him yeah. on. See yeah, if we can yeah. get him on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a great speaker too. He's really intelligent. So yeah, it'd be good. Good call. Yeah. Um, what about the plants that Sub Rob talked about? Like most of them, were they mostly familiar to you? Because they're yes. local, or were yeah, they all, that, like, all of them. All of yeah. them were familiar. Like that. That's what was really cool about that was like when you have these strains from your local area that you're very familiar with, or that are like 
legendary and you grew up thinking about those or you know what i mean like they're big in your life uh, that builds camaraderie as well you know um the bull rider the one that like by the time i got down there it was gone it was just fucking gone so it was like just this mystery you know like anything about it was a mystery but afghani bull rider was down there you know um and and of course me and rob like kind of had differing opinions on the uh the release of the Afghani bull rider, but you know, I had a lot more info on that, uh, the back info on, uh, the particular person we were referring to. So yeah, that's always going to happen, you know, like, especially in crews, like he's going to like someone that I don't, or be, be Luke, or at least like not know as much about someone as I do, or have as much to say about someone as I do different experiences that happens a lot. Um, yeah, that, that tends to happen when I talk to people that were around during a certain area, I'm like, fuck that guy you know like what do you mean he's okay fuck that guy that happens a lot so yeah (laughs) one thing i didn't get the chance to ask him in that first episode was like what's happened to those that group of people now or whether he's still in touch with them or oh yeah like still does stuff with them or um like one of the main guys was a guy named grayskull i mean i'm still in touch with grayskull too but he's moved on i think from cannabis now finally um I don't know. I, uh, I'll keep it vague on that. But yeah, he's a great dude, though. Everybody, all those guys still talk to each other. I think they're all still really close. Grotech, Sub Rob, um, Spicoli, Sean Cron. Um, yeah, all those awesome. guys are still really tight. And there's more. There's more. Sorry, guys, if I didn't name you. But yeah, there's a lot more. Um, Josie Wales, of course, no longer with us. Um, uh, he was part of the Gorilla Glue 4, four crew. Uh, Ross, mm. same. So. Yeah, I wonder if um, in those in those shows it was it was clear enough to some people who are newer like that some of these guys were actually directly involved in some of the biggest you know things yeah. that we have now, like Gorilla Glue, for example. I know one thing we wanted to cover that we didn't get to was talking about um, HPLV and the fact that like on San Diego's mm. finest that was one of the first times it had popped mm. up, like people talking about it, and it was Grayskull. Talking about the sour, no, the Gorilla Glue Four, I think, or Sour Dub, one of the two, um, being "quote unquote" dudded. So that was one of the first times it was ever yeah. brought up. That was on there, and later talking to Toomey and a few other places, it sounds like Sour Dub was actually patient zero, according to everything they've backtraced. That that might be where this weird, as however it was introduced from hops, was onto the Sour Dub plant and then distributed. Maybe not at the beginning of Sour Dub, but later on. You know, I wonder if it's possible as well that there were multiple patient zeros in different places uh, at possible. a point, or if there literally was just one single point of origin. I, yeah, I don't know enough about these things. Um, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, it, it just seems such, like such a random thing to bring a uh, something over from pot into dude, cannabis. I got to say, as I was reading through those threads, it was really interesting to kind of like see them talk about it without. Of course, like, you know, without the context that we have now. Yeah. Yeah. And it's almost like fucking, I don't know, like, uh, I don't know, it's like a flashback in a movie or something where, like, you're seeing the, like, origin of some villain or something. Oh, yeah. Like, you know, yeah. And people, like, the first thoughts that, or what people were saying about, yeah, this, like, evil presence that yeah. it was just, like, starting to grow. Um, you need to go back to really... the future, dude, and send him the fucking info. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, oh yeah, man. Reply to that thread, man. They'll get it back in the box. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Never know. Build a wormhole. You know, I that's that's a part we didn't get to that I thought that would be interesting to talk about. Yeah, Rob. Course, Rob, Rob didn't want to talk about that. Yeah, yeah we can we'll have one again. Um, the other thing that popped up in those threads that we didn't get to talk to, I mean, speak to, although it's not like the most exciting topic, but I did notice it was the forum cut appearing in those threads as yeah, well. Yeah. And when yeah. that happened. Yeah, yeah. Like I said. Um, that was around the time ape got it to me you know and and yeah. uh mm-hmm. lumpy's lumpy had his big uh um uh, thread lumpy's flowers lump status on um icy mag showcasing the cherry pie and and cookies that was one of the first threads like just huge grows of forum and cherry pie that people got to see in animal cookies too um so yeah and that was I, that was one of the first times i saw it and really got to see like this weird unique Wait, is that in the same did he post those in the same thread or is it like his own, his I, own I don't thread? remember if he started in san diego's finest but i know they're up in mm-hmm. there but he did have his own thread called lump status flowers i think right 
Yeah, yeah or Lumpy's GSC, up. Cherry Pie, or something like that. But yeah, they, but he was a part of the the SD's finest crew too. Um, yeah, because you know one thing about going through the San Diego's finest threads is that there are a lot of pictures of old plants in those, yeah. and I doubt that like you could like you uh, if you search on Google that you would find those pictures. I think no. like you'd have to actually go and dig through them. Um, but there's a lot still there. I was quite surprised. I was surprised um, that Rob pulled up the super hog. Uh, it was an old line that me and James <laughs> Hogg had worked on, like the the um, Hog's Breath mm -hmm. uh, OG SoCal Master hybrid. And like he, he texted me, he's like, do you see this? And it was me posting in like, I don't know, 2009-ish, I think. I have the, the post right here. Super hog. Yeah. It's fucking like, <laughs> I haven't seen that in a long time. I totally forgot about that strain. Yeah. yeah it's wild cool. to see that. Um, I think I, it was maybe the, I don't know if I'd seen pictures of the P91 before that. Thread. Yeah. Um, yeah. They're up in there. Yeah. So I, I linked to those threads in the sub Rob part two episode. Um, yes. definitely encourage people who are interested in that to go and like have a browse. I mean, it's like four, three or four, three threads for the cuts, one for seeds. I think the the finest cuts threads are like like two to three hundred pages each yeah they're so long <laughs> so, they're so long i was trying to get through all of, i was trying to like um quickly just literally flip through all the pages but it was Jesus. so yeah no. much it'd be hard to intake all that info you know in a city i think what i was i was starting to just ignore all the text and just look at only the pictures but even that was a lot yeah that would that would still be intense <laughs> yeah it's a lot there. Like going back and trying to restudy and reread that I was going through the same thing and some of the stuff I was remembering, I was just like, oh fuck this guy. <laughs> There's a lot of that. Oh fuck that guy. I'm sure you would have had like a yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> An interesting time going through that. Yeah. Um okay. Well, is there anything else on the forum combos that you want no, to No, I just on? I'm excited to do more. Um mm -hmm. I don't know how much and leave a comment below uh respond to this like i don't know how interesting interested people are in it like of course it's interesting to me because i was a part of some of that and and participated in it and uh had wild experiences in it met some of my best friends on earth you know there um but i don't know how interested the audience is in it so leave a comment below and let us know if you want more of stuff like that like genetic nerds coming on people that are nerdy as fuck like i am about it or do you want more grow topics or what you want I comment think, below yeah it's been interesting I, i'm gonna guess that our audience is now like i wouldn't say divided but they're obviously going to be different um groups within yeah within the audience and i think we got a whole bunch of new people in through the growing episodes and yeah obviously a strong following already from the beginning with the breeding um and like forum uh content so yeah, yeah I'm, I'm also curious i wish we had a way to like break it down so we knew like what proportion of people like I what, know, right? not that it would necessarily no, the only way we can but... is to get people to comment that's the only way we'll know really yeah comment i yeah yeah no one's ever going to fill out a fucking survey or anything no um, I, fuck surveys. <laughs> <laughs> I don't fill them out I trying to get stoners to fill out surveys yeah no <laughs> who get trolled so as well, i'm sure yeah i'm sure okay okay well Maybe the other stuff I was thinking that we could just touch on even briefly is like uh, both the some of the I know you've been talking about these anyway, but you know some of the drops that have ha already happened and maybe yes. upcoming uh, upcoming drops. So obviously it would be hard for us to like um, go over everything. But Matt, sure. Matt are there any like highlights for you? Uh, I think yeah, that stood um, out from yeah. So the past like few months we've had my blueberry in cross drop that I'm super stoked about. It's, it's where I feel like I'm happiest with uh, the blue work at from blue bonnet and uh, essentially DJ shorts, blue, blue bonnet. That's what I'm happiest with, like being able to release that. Um, we had high and lonesome stuff come out a bunch of his mango haze drop. Uh, his mango haze work uh, is I'm stoked on it. Like that's one of my favorite haze lines uh, that Neville's haze probably. Um, and he made amazing crosses with it. Like, so yeah, I'm stoked on that. Um, Pack has another Blue Dream cross to drop still of reversals that haven't been announced. And he just recently had oh, one. I don't think I like, knew about that. Yeah. And he had one with the Green Crack Blue Dream and, and a few others. Um, the P91 um, 
S1, Cross the Blue Dream, Bitter's Cut. Yeah, stuff like that. Right. Phenomenal stuff. Uh, we got to see some nice grows of all that in the Patreon. So yeah, definitely join the Patreon if you want to see like uh, a lot of these tester picks. Um, and uh, what else we have? The, oh, Matt Elite drop. Like I've been trying to get Matt to drop for five years at least. At least. Um, it, you know, I grew his seeds very early on and I I was just blown away. Not Not just by the seeds, but by the human behind them um how good of a grower he was so i knew how in order to do selections you have to be able to grow a plant to its ultimate potential to see what it's capable of and because he's such a good grower his selections are phenomenal and um i got to see that by growing his work and for the last five years i've really wanted to get him to get his stuff out there and he's just a very very much like uh bodhi in a sense like just very kind and doesn't like drama totally left the weed world because of drama just doesn't want to deal with it like too many people throw out negative energy he's just not into it so mm-hmm. he knew that releasing this might open himself up to some of that and he just wasn't into it at all but i'm very glad and thankful that he did because there's going to be a lot of really really stoked people um og's been missing from our community not not missing it was in abundance for a long time and then trying to find like really good og kush in regular seed form became damn near impossible like i had it in in hybrid seed form with blues and stuff but i didn't really keep a lot of the og og stuff because it was around so much back in the day but nowadays people are really trying to find that gassy gassy cushy you know that pine salt gassy just fuel yeah and that's all this is in spades and it's in regular seed form so you can make crosses with it and uh yeah and it's like 26 seeds a pack you know like he, he hooked it up so yeah, i'm i'm i i'm so over the moon about how, that. are some of them up already or are they like oh, yeah. about to go up or no they're all up cool yeah yeah they're all up and available people stopped pestering you about when they're going up and yes uh... <laughs> people have stopped that and now it's more like when is he gonna restock this one's sold out in five minutes when's he gonna restock there's still some left but yeah it's it, they <laughs> They went very fast, especially the Resurrection, which is the uh, line I've talked about the most. The Chem 91, Chem D, I-95. Because, mm-hmm. like, the reason it was called Resurrection is because, like, he felt like, and I didn't understand this until after I smoked it, and I was like, that's why you called it Resurrection. It was like Chem 91, but just with the terps turned up to, I don't know, just a, a ridiculous mm-hmm. amount. So you can smell all those the back smells that you'd smell in the clone of chem 91 that you'd be like, man, that would be really nice if it was, you know, a lot louder of that. And it was just like all those scents turned up and um, it was like resurrecting that old clone to be what those guys probably smelled when they first grew it. Um, That line's perfect. It's absolutely perfect. So that sold out. Like, I think even less than five minutes, like minute, you know, (laughs) it was gone wild. Yeah. So I don't know. I was stoked on it. I was stoked to get his stuff back out there. Yeah. yeah yeah it's nice to see that um you know he got the message out and people are definitely very very eager yeah um for it i love that guy too so it makes me happy that he can because the other thing was he's like yeah nobody wants this shit nobody cares and i'm like for years i've been telling him dude you don't know you don't know i promise you you'll be surprised and of course like when things sold down he's like god damn <laughs> you know like, that's shocking but yeah shout out to me uh, yeah, and I hope uh, HNL doesn't mind me saying this, but I feel like HNL also has been like quite really like self-deprecating about his, uh, his own work, be. and I'm like, why are yeah. you like this? Why are you so jaded? <laughs> I mean, yeah. at the same time, I'm like, I also know why you're so jaded, but he's just you know. a very humble farmer guy, you know. That's just yeah. him. Yeah, him and Matt Elite yeah. are very very similar in a, in a lot of ways. Um, and you know, to be fair, like I know what it's like to have been working in a space for a really long time. It is it is easy to get like you know disillusioned or like just yeah. feel a bit like meh about the whole thing but his uh, attitude is more like eh, just seeds you know like that's just it just <laughs> seeds you know? but yeah i think uh the mango hay stuff will get a great reception um i'm glad that most of the people buying it aren't people buying off of hype too because mango haze isn't like something super hyped it's people that want to have a haze experience that understand mm-hmm. what a mm-hmm. haze experience would it be and what it would entail to grow that it'll be long, lanky. You need to grow plenty of it to find a keeper. 
people understand that that are buying it. So that's I think that's super important too. Like lines can be received well and or ill received based on who buys them. Like if you're not educated on Hayes and you're buying it, you probably won't be stoked. Um, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Like I'm buying so, it for I mean, commercial. Like, you know? I think, and I hope I'm not mistaken. I'll have to go check again because, you know, you guys sent me so much stuff. But I think he sent me dog shit, you know, EB Mango Hayes. He might have. Um, yeah. I hope I haven't gotten that wrong. But that, that seems kind of fun. Yeah. Makes sense. Mm. <laughs> He also had um, freebies. I think it was, uh, hmm, what was it? I can't remember what the female was, but it was crossed to Cough Vietnam Black. So like an NL5 Haze. Oh, oh yeah, Black I vaguely there. remember, but yeah. not, not. I can't remember what the, yeah, precisely the, the enough. female side was. God damn it. But yeah, no, like it, I remember looking and going, fuck, these are the freebies? That's fire. Fire, fire, fire. So yeah. Guys, grow some and send Matt some. Yes. Send me some smoke. Oh, except Matt can't smoke any yet. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, send me some in eight months whenever it's done. Fuck. Oh, man. I am impressed that you've... I mean, at the same time, I, I gathered like this... In a miserable just, fucking Like how experience. bad it was. How bad it was that this is what you're resorting to. Um, yeah. So I also it appreciate was, that. I, it was a miserable experience um, going through cannabinoid hyperemesis syndrome. But this is a miserable experience because, like, I I have such bad anxiety all day, and I really was using cannabis to cope with that and dabbing, um, and it really I don't know if it I, at the time I felt like it wasn't helping that much, but like looking back, like being sober all the time, it definitely made a difference, and it does. It's a major life change, and I remember thinking like. Uh, during the time when I was going through all the throwing up shit and like thinking like, you know, slowly coming to the conclusion that maybe this is the CHS and that I would have to stop for at least like a month to figure it out. Like thinking that it, it would have to be the last resort in my life to ever come to that point where I would quit smoking for a month full to even find out just to find out. And I was able to do it from the jump and never went back. Like I never re. You know, I, I don't know, it, but it sucks. It sucks ass. I cannot wait till time's up and I can start flooding my receptors again. <laughs> it's Maybe suck, fewer bro. dabs when you come back. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not going to dab anymore. That's one thing I'm not going to do is dab. Um, I really learned. Like, I, I, I have a, a hard time as a like a former addict and like I'm, I'm an addict to a lot of different things in my life, whether it's food or, you know how I spend my time or interests, how, how OCD I get about stuff. Yeah. 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 Compulsive. yeah. I, I don't realize when I'm being compulsive about stuff. So like dabbing could be a real issue. So I'm just not going to do it when I, uh, when I'm able to smoke again, flour. I think I'll be fine with just flour and won't have any more issues. If I mm-hmm. go through this whole process and really do, um, uh, clean my receptors out. Dark. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, um, is there anything else you wanted to highlight? Otherwise, we can move on to squirrels. This like, this moved on to squirrels question. It was a good question. I mean, what do you? So you have a read of it. I think you've got the, mm-hmm. the, the document on your screen. Um, yeah. What do you? I'm not. Ent- I'm not hundred percent of uh, on how to approach this. I'll leave this to you. I think. Like, well, okay. how do you interpret this question? Um, he he was asking me to break down how scammers inflate generic terms over promising traits. So, I think I've talked about this briefly. In different aspects and different respects to different yeah, lines. We're touching on diff- many different ways. Mm-hmm. But um, like you said, for example, like ABC, Sour, Haze, NL5, um, uh, three different lines that are notoriously hard for line breeding. So trying to breed sp- certain. Okay, let me, let me rewind it back. Let's say you have a line and you grow out a thousand plants. And only one of those plants has that expression. And you grab that plant to breed with it, right? If you then cross it to something else, you you wouldn't expect to see 50% of the population to be that because in its own population, it was recessive. It was very rare on the line. If it was recessive, it was just very rare occurring, you know? Um, I think that's what he's referring to in stuff like this. Like, haze itself has... Tons of different expressions. So promising like a haze IBL 
is hard. It's very hard to do. Um, it would take many years of breeding a haze in a certain direction because it's a, a like one of the first polyhybrids. Um, things like ABC, uh, a trait that isn't locked in until you're in the F4 generation, roughly, F3, F4. So you're starting to see true breeding traits of that uh, ABC type. Like having a, a one-off ABC hybrid would be more hard to find that, you know. Um, what else do we got here? Sour. Now, sour, I think, can dominate in looks more often than it does in terps. Sour has a particular mm -hmm. look, so when people see that, they think, because it's a very distinctive look. I've got it. Yeah, they yeah. think we've got it. They think we got it, for sure. But that's just one trait out of everything that comprises sour. Um, that burnt rubber nastiness that in sour isn't necessarily going to show up with that trait, the, the look trait every time. So I, I think that's kind of what he means by this. Like we've seen a lot of sour, different iterations of the generations and whatnot, but like in, um, for example, karma sour, like there was a lot of just mostly OG in that it looked like sour, but it was a lot of OG terps. Um, and people really thought they had it, you know, just cause it had the look. So I think that's what he's referring to in this. Um, mm -hmm. I don't even know if it's more of a, a scammer thing as opposed to just like people that are behind the scenes making the seeds don't know what the fuck they're talking about. Um, mm -hmm. They're not growing out enough plants to see that they haven't achieved what they're claiming, nor do they understand how genetics work and that having a rare expression pop up in a line mm -hmm. doesn't mean that they can cross it once and then that line is like half that. That yeah, I think sense. that's I think that's the key. I think that's a key framing. I think that's yeah. a good summary statement of this. And I mean, I had a different <clears throat> maybe this is another way to ask you this question, which is like mm -hmm. if you were, you know, uh you're trying to be responsible as a breeder or seed seller, um, knowing that like these things tend to be probabilistic, um, what's the best way to frame this kind of information? Because obviously you need to give people some information, but you, you can't also pretend that like, you, you know, absolutely what they're going to get. So I guess, you know, one of my initial impulses to say, well, you can, you know, one thing that I do see people do is like present like a range, right? Yeah. A range of expressions and say, okay, when, when I grew this out, or when my testers grew this out, we saw like, you know, some collection of possible yeah traits and i guess that's maybe one of the ways you can approach it right like yeah the other way is to use a true breeding line as a parent mm -hmm. that'll help a lot you know like if one of those parents that's is true. very close to true breeding mm -hmm. for several traits i mean that's why again why i didn't move on from bonnet forever because it it's a true breeding line like it re regularly and reliably kicks blueberry terps and it has a very yeah. specific look it has specific resin pattern type that it breeds true for in the sense that it in almost everything it's crossed to it'll occur more regularly than its partner in that sense mm -hmm. um that makes it so you can say okay you can expect to see bury this this that you know like three different main expressions that helps because yeah. it, it brings That's some right. accuracy um but the other way yeah is to just explain the different ranges the the different be be realistic about the flowering times too because a lot of people are not realistic about flowering times whatsoever in their descriptions yeah it reminds me didn't we did we not do a show where like we actually looked through like some seed websites just to see what the marketing was like do we actually record that i don't, I don't remember. think we did um, i don't think we did I, so should. Weird. I, Maybe we should i was gonna say that like another time we could like we're gonna pull up a website in the background and actually show people who we're talking about just to like, you know, not rough too many feathers and like maybe like just comment on like the way that the information's being framed, stuff Absolutely. like that. Uh we can do yeah. that another time. I think that'd be fun. Because I think it'd be a nice experience. It would be funny. It'd be very funny, I think. I Make lots like of friends. I'm so sure we did it. I, I feel like I have a memory of you and I looking at, say, like Barty's farm website. I something. think we did, you know what? I think we did that for just like a few minutes of something, but not a full episode of it. It would be interesting yeah. to go through, like open up the attitude. Let's go through the yeah. list. Mm -hmm. That actually yeah. was, a, that would be a great episode. Uh, comment below yeah. if you want us yeah. to do that. Cause I'll take the heat and do it. You know, like uh, I don't I mind. I think for the major seed me. banks, it's not too, you know, it's not too scary because you know, they're this like, like you said, it's like Walmart. It's like, who cares? Yeah. Like Walmart's the attitude anyway. Care. They're a bunch of bitches. That's what I say. Yeah, that's um, they were bitches to me them so 
So, but it's not just even about them. It's about the the breeders are caring though. Like we'd be going over the breeders are caring. Those are individuals. Um, and uh, yeah, but I'm down to do it because like everybody should be held accountable, including myself. You know, people hold me yeah. accountable all the time and ask me every question they can. So well, why you know, not everybody I mean, else? You and I have talked about these ideas before, like in a broader sense. Like uh, I think that we, we probably could do a diff different kinds of reviews of like yes. different kinds of cannabis content, but I just haven't really thought about how to frame it all. Like Same. I think it'd be very funny to do like the strain hunters one, for example. Oh my god. Or, like yeah. Um, but it's again, amazing. I don't know how you know uh, practically I'm not sure, but we can think about it. Um, I mean, yeah, comment down below if you want us to review, um, I don't know, mainstream, I guess you'd call it mainstream can of content. I um, think it'd be fun to do like on the on the Patreon discord to load it up like oh, a video yeah. and just have me talk over it. But then again, I'm probably oh, yeah, on the, voice, on the stage. Yeah. yeah, it would work on the stage. That would be hilarious. Yeah, I could do that. <laughs> <laughs> OK, um, what were we talking about again? Oh, yeah, yeah, that question. Yeah, I think also it just reminds me that, yeah, like you said, we have approached this question in like many different ways, I think, yeah. in the past. Like we had that whole episode on like white labeling. We talked about it again with Pico, white labeling, yep. that side of the marketing. We've talked about breeding in general and like how you look at it in terms of probability and like, um, you know, what a true breeding um, plant would do in a breeding project as opposed to something yep. that you, you know, have no clue about or like, you know, whatever. Um, in some ways, this is just the question, isn't it? Like, this yeah. is a question we just come back to again and again, which is how do you, given the information that you have as a consumer or buyer of seeds or whatever, like make decisions about what you're buying? And it's, I need to make a yeah. buy smarter episode, which would be like going through the attitude or something. How do I, how would someone experience yeah, go through and pick seeds, you know, if they're hunting like, yeah. for something specific, something like that? Yeah, 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 we could do it. We could do it. Because um, yeah. I think what we've done in the past is looked at it from a breeding point of view, yeah, but not necessarily from the buyer's point of view. No, um, no, it's yeah, and I, you know, like a lot of what I was doing early on was because I was also a seed buyer, not just a seed maker, and I felt like people need to be protected, like this is their hard-earned money, <laughs> you know, like people are getting swindled yeah. left and right. Not just people; some of my friends were still getting swindled at this point, you know, still yeah. are, and. uh It'd yeah. be nice to have something for them to understand. Like, this is something I take into account when I'm looking at seeds and seed buying from someone this far in that's from the opposite side of the spectrum. Go in, look at other things. And, but I'm sure people would say I'm just a hater. You know, I'm just hating on certain companies because I'm jealous or something. But I mean, realistically, be it'd be nice to do from a seed buying perspective to help people. I mean, I have, you know, my current take on it is that, like, I just won't. There's no way I would even consider buying anything if I just if I don't know the person. And when I yeah. say don't know them, I don't even mean like I recognize their brand. I mean like if I haven't talked to them yes. and I don't know any, or what they're about, I'm not even going to consider it. You should be cause... able to ask questions and yeah. yeah, be able to be relatable to these people. Because at the end of the also, day, none of them are rock stars. I'll put it differently as well. Like there's so much good work that can be trusted or like good work from good people who can already be trusted. So why would you even like yeah. bother with like yeah. Anyway, I've been yeah, we can get into that from the more. rooftops forever. Like, well, why even waste your money like that when there's already good people? Yeah. 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 You're not going to be rewarded for like taking risks in that regard. I don't think. No. Uh, no. No. There's not a lot good to find that way. Yeah. Okay. Well, I think that's good. That kind of yeah. signals that. Yeah. Maybe we do. We should do a show on on that specifically, like the buyer's journey. Um, yeah. And, and feel free to leave comments below. If you have other show ideas, um, we'd like to take them from our Patreon Discord too. Uh, a lot of people in there you can hang out with, but uh, feel free to leave show comments below too. Um, yeah, yeah. Man, I think that's us for today. I think yeah. we like can keep it pretty cute. Um, Wrap it up in a package. Yeah, yeah. Little bow, little pink bow. That's right. All right. So uh, I guess, do uh, you have anything else you want to say? Not really. This is nice to be back. Uh, feels yeah, very... Glad to have you back. You know, feels very familiar. It wasn't hard at all to slot back in. So no. yeah, nice to be back. All right. And with that, um, go check out riotseeds.com for all your seeds and spray needs. Um, we have stuff to make feminized seeds. There's a bottle behind something over there that's hidden. Um, 
uh, we carry seeds from all sorts of breeders in our crew. Uh, like I said, High and Lonesome just did his Mango Haze drop. Pack has his Blue Dream stuff up and his Trade Rack stuff up. Uh, Mad Elite seeds, there's still some left to get. We have my Blueberry and Cross drop. Uh, Miss Jill has her seeds up there. Sub Rob has his seeds up there. The Skank Dog mm-hmm. and the SSSDH. Um, I know I'm missing some. But yeah, anyways, go check them out. The great people. They're up there, and all these people are accessible, whether it's on IG or the Patreon Discord. All these people you can talk to and interact with, and they'll talk to you about their lines. Um, then we have, uh, of course, like I said, our Patreon Discord. Go check it out. Uh, Patreon.com forward slash Breeder Syndicate. It's uh, $5 a month. Uh, for the cost of a coffee, you can have a lot of benefits. Uh, 30% off me and pack seeds. Um, or high and low. Or I'm sorry. Access. Goat farm. Just- yeah info people access to info people it's a great it's a great fucking community and when like in other communities there's always trolls and shit this one handles itself i mean it's pretty (laughs) self-policing if someone doesn't fit in and they're just being rude and and hurtful they don't last long so um i really appreciate it i never thought i'd see it grow to what it has um by a lot of that to thousand because like it it really really turned up um yeah i'm proud of everyone there and uh yeah i think isn't that it did i cover it oh no go check out um uh, lifted lifted seeds.com lftdseeds.com um riot seed co europe for all your riot seeds in europe needs girt by seeds for all of your what would you call that part of the world southeast you i think uh you'd say like oceania but people don't know that term just oceania. say australia new zealand yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Australia, new, australia zealand. new zealand needs uh girt by seeds on instagram and uh with that yeah that's it Cheers, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Want to sit at the table with the syndicate? Check out our Patreon and our link tree or description below. Our merch site is officially live. We have all sorts of shirts, hoodies, and goodies to sort you out, and shipping is super fast, and most importantly, the quality is top-notch. I've been saving old designs for years for this purpose, so please check it out, syndicategear.com. We also have an underground syndicate discord where we get together and solve old strain history together daily. It's an amazing community of learning away from IG and it's an amazing resource for old catalogs and knowledge. We hope you join our union of breeders and growers. Come check it out.